Watching TV has changed over time. Streaming has become the new norm. That's why Golden State Media Concepts Television Podcast dives headfirst to the world of cord cutting. Want to be on the loop of what's hot in Netflix? Or if it's not a preference, what about original shows in Hulu? We've got you covered. Join us as we fill in the blanks and talk about movies to stream and what show you should be binging. This is the Golden State Media Concepts Television Podcast. back to the GSMC TV podcast. I don't know what episode we're on now. I've been casting for probably three weeks. No, way longer than that. Probably about a month. A month to like a month and a week. So we put out about two episodes. I put four episodes a week because I do social media and TV. So I've completely lost count, but I digress. Welcome back to the GSMC TV podcast. I'm your host, Devin Harris, and I'm so happy to be back with you guys today. It is Sunday, the Lord's Day. Also, you know, Dare Me comes on tonight and The Bachelor comes on tomorrow night, so it's just a great, great start to the week all around. Um, what have you guys been listening to and watching? I've been watching, (laughs) um, that's a, like, mini series on YouTube. Um, it's, uh, drag stars, Trixie Mattel and Katya Z, they're drag queens, and it's, like, this crazy crackhead-esque humor, which is, you know, my favorite. I I like that kind of stuff. Uh, I like to be, I always like to tell people, you know, like, I enjoy being crackhead without the crack. I just think it's fun, you know, um, just saying whatever comes to your mind. It's not really that great of a flex, so, but I like having, like, a lot of fun without using drugs. Like, I like whenever people are like, what are you on? And I'm like, I'm not on anything. I just think being out there is, like, fun for me. Um, But that's what I'm watching, and it's just that kind of humor. It's, like, out of nowhere, like, a lot of cut edits, and, like, um, I don't know, it's just, it's funny. It's hard to explain because it is so weird, um, but there's a lot of drag humor. And my friend who recently um, moved back to New York today turns me on to that show, so... Yeah, I'm watching all of these new trailers. There seems to be like something new coming out every single day. And I honestly didn't pay attention a lot to all of the new content that was being produced on such a regular basis until I started doing this TV podcast. And now that I'm paying attention to it, it seems like the output of new thing like new tv new movies it's just constant like it's constant media is so bingeable and so you know there's so much of it which i guess is a good thing but i don't like to feel like i'm zoned in all the time like i feel like i'm wasting my life if i'm zoned into the tv or like my phone and stuff did you know there were like phone rehab centers like for people who are addicted to their phones i'm seriously bad at it but I need to do more research on like what it entails and maybe put it on the social media podcast because that's super interesting to me I feel like I could definitely be a candidate because I'm on my phone way too much more than I would like to be on my phone um yeah there's like a rehab for it and everything like detoxes you from your phone or whatever I'm totally gonna like look into that 
I saw a trailer the other day while waiting for Sabrina to drop. Sabrina Part 3 just dropped on Netflix. And I saw a trailer for coming soon to Netflix. And I think by this time, this show might already be out. I'm not sure. But I saw this trailer for a show called Horse Girl. Um, Horse Girl, you know, for the po- the pop culture reference is you know the girl who is obsessed with horses and I say girl because it's almost exclusively like females and you know every school has you know that group of horse girls who love to ride horses and gallop around the courses and are just generally kind of socially awkward and stuff so this Netflix series is based around that um and it's it stars Allison Brie um it's a new Netflix psychological drama. So it stars Alison Brie and she is she plays a girl named Sarah and Sarah is like your typical loner. Um she stays in on the weekend. She doesn't have many friends. She works at like a hobby store and she's obsessed with true crime. So she's and horses, of course. So she's your stereotypical horse girl. Um and Molly Shannon and Debbie Ryan are also in this. And so, basically, Sarah is going about her life, and she starts having these really crazy kind of, like, dreams. She starts having trouble sleeping, and she wakes up and, like, is in random places that she doesn't really remember, like, being in. Like, she doesn't remember how she got there, and she starts seeing aliens, and all this crazy, like, paranormal stuff starts happening. Um, And so... You have, like, this horse girl, and then all of a sudden, she's in the trailer, she's like, I know, I know, um, aliens aren't real, I know it doesn't make sense, but I believe they're abducting me and stuff. And so, throughout the trailer, it's, like, revealed that Sarah has a grandmother, or had a grandmother, who also saw, quote, aliens, unquote. And she's telling this to her dad, and her dad's like, you know are you starting to see this stuff? Because she's like, when did grandma start seeing aliens? And uh, her dad's like, why? Why do you, is this happening to you? And she's like, no, no, no. And so my automatic thought is like, oh, okay, this is like an inherited mental health thing. Like this is schizophrenia. Um, but people, you know, there are tons of different theories. Um, it could be, you know, it could be schizophrenia, like, it could go down that route, but it could also be, like, actual aliens, like, it could go total paranormal, and it could be actually, like, a sci-fi kind of thriller thing, or some people are saying, you know, um, she could have a concussion injury from falling off her horse or something, and that's why she's seeing all of these things, but I think it would be strange if it was gonna follow that because why would they bring her grandmother in other than to just throw us off so I don't know it it has like five different ways it could go and I'm all invested in it right now like I really would love to um watch it and that's coming that's coming to Netflix March 6th so it's a little bit of a ways out um it's not actually on there I have the date (laughs) like in my brain I don't know why I said maybe this will be out by the time you're listening to this it's not out it's not coming until March 6th but that stars um Allison Brie Molly Shannon and Debbie Ryan so horse girl on Netflix also coming to Netflix all the boys I loved before I've loved before p.s. I still love you so that little you know Noah Centineo and all of his 5,000 movies where he played the same person. And then Star- Starship Troopers and Jerry Maguire is coming. So that's, you know, that's a little bit of Netflix babble. When we come back, Sabrina, The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina Part 3 dropped Friday. Um, and of course, I did not miss that. I sat down and watched it immediately. Um, and from what I, you know, witnessed, picked up pretty easily, and it was, it was a journey. It was definitely a journey, so I will, you know, give you my vague retelling 
of that um, when we come back. Stay right here with us. It's going to be a really interesting episode. We have live action Bambi we're going to talk about, the punk reboot, and Zola, the Twitter thread turned film. It's going to be a fun show. So go get a snack, go get your socks on, get a pillow, and let's just chill together. Want to know the latest and hottest music hidden in the airwaves? Don't be left out. Listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Music Podcast. Keith keeps you on the loop with everything you need to know from pop, rock, hip-hop, and the top 40. And we'll throw in news of your favorite artists, concert and tour dates, and so much more. Listen no further, because this is the gold standard in music podcast. So, The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina Part 3 dropped on Friday onto Netflix. It just dropped from the sky like an angel falling to the earth. Kind of like Sabrina, um, actually. And I have not, you know, mined Twitter for fan reactions. I just have my reaction to go off of. Um, and it's been a while since part two. I think the last time I watched this, I binged it in like two weeks and that was in September. I watched it way before October. It might've even been August. I was super, super early on my like spooky vibes and so I I binged all of that. I redid my room in black. I got super witchy, and then it just kind of fell off. So it's been a good, I want to say, September, October, November, December, January, about six months. And so I needed a little bit of a refresher. And the show did a good job of kind of picking up where it left off last. And... If you haven't watched the seasons and you're concerned about spoilers, skip forward, like, I'll just be kind of quick with it. Skip forward about 30 seconds to a minute. Where we last left off, um, Nick Scratch, Sabrina's new love interest, was banished to hell, to the underworld, and Sabrina decides... Let's go get my boyfriend back. And so we pick up right there. And um, as far as I can tell, you know, we're kind of teased in the first episode of part three. Um, that's still her big mission. And there's kind of a dream sequence that's a little bit misleading. Um, but that's where we pick up. Um, Nick is still in um, hell and... Sabrina kind of has to take her place as goddess of the underworld in exchange for him to come back. And, um, it's, it's getting darker and darker and darker. Like one of the quotes Roz says is like, Sabrina, it can't be all hell all the time. And, and that's really where it's going. Like Sabrina is getting more involved with the dark Lord and, getting more involved with, you know, her studies of black magic. Um, and the character has even changed. Like, as we go on, so the first the first part, her hair was still, you know, honey blonde. And her skin was still had some color to it. Part two, she, like, changed it to white and cut it a little bit and her makeup got darker and now in part three she like totally vampy like she has this really vampy look cute big hair like her character is changing with the parts and so um it's getting darker like everything is getting darker um there is so much change from the first part um so yeah that we left off with sabrina and Nick, um, there's a lot of 
singing in this. That was my initial, you know, I watched it in passing while I was doing other activities. And there's a lot of singing, like almost like musical-esque singing. There's one little snippet where Sabrina and Roz joined cheerleading, which was super cute to me. Like I had to stop and watch. And they do this like musical number, like they're lip singing slash you can tell it's recorded. And they're doing a cheer routine, but it's like out of a high school musical. Like, like it's just weird to me. I feel like this is a trend to do like musical numbers and TV shows now, but um, it was cute. You know, I didn't hate it. Um, Kieran and Shipka, actually, this isn't new because she actually recorded music for the first and second season. And so did Tati Gabrielle, I think that's her name. She played Prudence. Um, all of the girls did, really, because they sang in the choir in, like, part one and part two. So this isn't new, but they had, like, a choreographed routine. Um, Roz and Sabrina and, like, the whole cheer team. So it was interesting. Um, kind of out of place. But that's, you know, you can expect a little bit more music for um, part three. And then I thought for sure, like, we might get a little bit of Sabrina um, Harvey action, but I won't reveal too much. It's not like a, so much was given to me, but I was crushed whenever Sabrina and Harvey broke up. Like, I loved them together, even though it's not you know, super out of the norm, like, her ending up with Nick is, like, less basic, but I liked what Harvey brought to her life, it was, like, a sense of, like, calm and stability and stuff, and that 180 kind of switch plot line where she ends up with Nick instead of Harvey is, like, I thought, no, like, this is wrong, and then Harvey ends up with Ross, and it's just all a mess, and so they, we got a little bit of, like, a glimpse of, Harvey and Sabrina maybe, you know, having a moment. It was very short-lived. Um, but I'm, like, sitting over here, like, please get back together. I loved them together. I really don't like Nick Scratch. Like, he's not my favorite. I'm not big on bad boys. Um, but that's, you know, first episode, pretty dark. Um, well, not, not too dark, but darker than parts one and parts two, like, it, as we go and go and go, I'm excited to see, I'm really excited to see where Theo's plot line goes, like, I'm excited to see if Theo or Susie into Theo goes all the way with, like, transgender and getting a partner and stuff, I'm very excited for that, I'm excited for Roz and her storyline, when I get a chance to binge the whole season, I want Sabrina and Harvey to end up back together, but of course, you never know. Um, but we'll definitely have our fair share of devil stuff. That's my little, you know, um, recap of season three, or part three, whatever. I don't know why they're doing this in parts and not seasons. I just, I use them interchangeably. But that's my recap of the first episode. Definitely seemed like they were trying a little bit hard with that musical thing. It's just, it seemed very out of sorts for this show. When we come back, Taylor Swift just, well, I guess not Taylor Swift. Netflix just released the trailer for Taylor Swift's new Netflix documentary, Miss Americana. And we're here to talk about it, do some trailer talk, and just, you know, break down my thoughts and you know intense dislike of taylor swift but but i'll try and not let that cloud my judgment i just don't i'm not a huge fan and i'll get into that very briefly and we'll just talk about you know what's going on i touched about it briefly a couple of episodes ago just on the fact that miss americana was coming out but now that they've officially released a trailer we have more of like information on what kind of content is going to be there so i'll fill you guys in and stuff um when we come back and then we'll talk also a little bit about live action bambi um don't know whose idea that was 
probably not the best idea for children, but Disney's got to make, you know, more money for itself. So we'll talk about all that when we come back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. I used to be the biggest Taylor Swift fan. Like, I'm not even going to front. Um, I had her album Fearless whenever I was in seventh grade, and I played it so many times. I, I had it, you know, on repeat all of the time. Um, and her Tim McGraw album, that was, like, you know, her first album with the blue background and, like, the really curly hair, the one where she sang the song Tim McGraw. Um, I'm not sure if it was called Tim McGraw, but I know that was the single. And way back whenever she first released, like, our song, um, I love that song, and I still do. She's done a complete 180 from who she used to be. And as soon as she, you know, left the country music scene, I lost interest. Although I'm not into country music like I once was, I really liked her um, and what she did, you know, and I feel like she has changed into a completely different person, and I don't really understand why people are not seeing this, um, why people, you know, st- the original fans, why she has such a following, like, I don't understand it, because it seems like it's blatantly obvious that she used, you know, country music as an end to mainstream society and then totally ditched it for bubblegum pop and just like selling out and stuff and I find that incredibly just I don't find that very respectable or admirable I find it I find it her to be a sellout honestly um and so my initial review of course, of the Miss Americana trailer is just cringe. Like, I was rolling my eyes the whole time. Um, we'll just get into it, and I'll give you my opinion. So, um, the trailer drops, and um, the beginning, we see Taylor kind of getting ready for a big concert. And she's, the first thing she says is, okay, nobody, there's nobody who hates me in the audience. And it's just like girl, like, she just, she gets on my nerves, um, so this is, like, a behind-the-scenes documentary, so I guess it's showing, you know, the things that she's had to endure, um, I mean, mega stardom, it comes with the territory, uh, and so that's her first opening line, I rolled my eyes, whatever, um, it goes through her saying, you know, I always had to, curate myself for the media this is her you know background overlay while all these montages of her you know growing up and performing and stuff play in the trailer and she's like my producers and everybody told me growing up that good girls smile and wave good girls agree and good girls don't you know spread their opinions and I'm just like says who like you totally give your opinion. You've never been shy about giving your opinion. 
You've never been shy about dating whoever you want to date. Like, don't even front, girl. So, um, then it jumps to a scene with her, in her living room. Like, she's, like, crying. There's lots of, you know, raw footage and, um, a lot of tears. And she's apparently giving her opinion on politics. And that's what the whole Miss Americana is about. It's, it's an, like, a nod to politics and it has a lot to do with politics. Like, that's what it's about. And her speaking up and, you know, finding her voice and, um, in the political climate in 2020. Like, that's, that's what the, the trailer alluded to anyways. And I just thought, you know, cry me a river. <laughs> like that, that was my honest thought. I've said that so many times because she, at one point she's sitting on her like living room or wherever, like she's with her mom and she's, she's crying and she's, you know, saying like, I, she's essentially saying through this whole thing that she needed to create a new belief system and throw out her old belief system and that she's fighting for people's respect and stuff and that's the angle she's taking with the documentary and it's like dude like we followed you for the last 10 to 12 years of your career we know what's going on (laughs) like you what you know quote like programming unquote do you have to unlearn i don't know it just it struck me as a very like first world problemy like you have a platform you can speak out on what you want to speak out about now if she were doing something a little bit different that wasn't all about her like if she was using her platform for other people i'd be more inclined to be like okay you know like if she was speaking out about you know sex trafficking and she made a huge like a whole documentary about her speaking out and using her voice okay but the fact that she's speaking out and she's like like the whole documentary is about her finding her voice in politics and earning respect it's like i i don't know it just seems really shallow to me i but that's probably because i really don't like her and i don't understand why other people you know do and i don't think she's you know, that great of a singer. I think she's manufactured by the music industry. She luckily got her foot in the door before you actually had to have any sort of talent outside of a vocal booth. I know that's a very harsh um, opinion, but that is my opinion. Um, the, The trailer for the Miss Americana documentary is a documentary it looks shallow to me. Basically, this documentary is about Taylor Swift finding her voice, using it in a new way, being on the right side of history, as she puts it, and speaking out um, for the things that she believes in. For the first time, um, that's, you know, that's the gist of what the trailer has, you know, what we've gotten from the trailer. She actually also drops an F-bomb in the trailer, so it's sure to be a grand old shooketh time. This documentary premieres on January 31st, right after it premieres at the Sundance Film Festival. So, you know, I think I might actually watch it. I said the first time that we even got any kind of inkling that Taylor was making a documentary that I was not going to watch it, but I think I'm going to give it a chance. Um, I might, you know, go crazy, but I want to see if there's anything that I'm missing. You know, I want to see if, if she really is as annoying as, as I think she is. I want to see, you know, what she is doing, what she's going through, and if I have misjudged her, so I'll probably watch it, you know, just to get the full scoop before totally shutting any, you know, semblance of liking her down. Because right now I'm there, but I have to admit, unpopular opinion from me, the song Miss Americana and the Heartbreak Prince is actually good. Like, I actually like that song. Um, 
that's on her new album Lover, and that's, you know, the the song of the documentary. That's what she named it after, Miss Americana. Um, and she kind of uses the metaphor of high school, you know, against the backdrop of the political climate and how Americana is not what we always thought it was going to be. So that's, you know, what we have right now. January 31st, um, so like nine days. I'm, I'm, I'm excited for it. Not nine days. I cannot do basic math. Five days. Yes. I'm, I'm excited to watch it. I might not make it through. Um, there's a lot of hype around it. Um, it seems like it's stuff that we've already covered just in a new, easily digestible form. But seeing that she's totally dropped her, you know, goody two shoes act and she's blatantly throwing around F bombs in her trailer, I might give it a shot. I'm a queen for a good F bomb. So, that's that. When we come back, Bambi is being made into a live action movie. So, we'll talk a little bit about that. We'll talk about what's coming to Disney Plus um, February 2020, um, a little bit about the punk reboot, and then we'll talk about Zola. So there's this girl, she, her name is Zola, she's a, <laughs> she's a stripper, and it's kind of, you know, her stripper diaries, she, there's, was this crazy Twitter thread, um, that was like 200 threads long a tell-all in it. I listened to the whole thing. It's being turned into a movie picked up by Studio A24, which is an awesome studio. They made Midsummer, Um, and so we'll get a little bit into that. It's kind of an unbelievable story. Um, and then to end, I'm going to list five movies you need to watch with your significant other. And this was actually, I requested this. I, I was like, I asked my significant other, Tyler, I said, you know, what would you want to hear? What should I do for my wild card? And he said, why don't you do five movies that you should watch with your significant other? So straight from Tyler, five movies to watch with your bae. So stay right here with us. We'll be right back with the GSMC TV podcast. Want to find out what movies to go see? Then check out the GSMC Movie Podcast. It's your ticket to the latest movies, whether it's a new blockbuster event, romantic, comedy, or action flick. This show has got it all covered. They talk some what to go see now. Don't bother. What's hot on Netflix and everything in between? That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash movie dash podcast. When it's all about the movies, it has to be this new show. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. So, they're making Bambi into a live action movie. Did y'all know that? Um, first it was The Lion King. I mean, you know, not first, after, you know, a bajillion movies were remade. Now it's Bambi. (laughs) I mean, whose idea was that? Who's, who thought it would be a good idea to make, to remake the one most brutal Disney film that traumatized every child and remake that into a live action movie? Apparently they're remaking Bambi into a live action movie. I just figured this out today. So they're going to take the 1942 classic and turn it, you know, half CGI, half real, real deer and create a little something with it. And, um, not, not a lot is known. There's no release date. There's no, you know, like there, there's no script release, no writer release. Well, actually the writer is Captain Marvel writer Geneva, Geneva Robertson. She's co-writing, but as far as plot goes, you know, some some have asked, okay, will it be strictly Disney, um, the first Bambi, or will it be a little bit of Bambi 2, like finding his father and stuff like that? Um, not a lot is known right now. It's just kind of 
up in the air. It was just announced. Um, but my question is, will it go to theaters or will it go to Disney Plus? I can't see it going to theaters. I feel like The Little Mermaid will definitely, like, we already know that's going to be a theatrical release. Um, but I feel like Bambi's a classic. I feel like Bambi, although The Little Mermaid would pull ahead, Bambi is right up there with, you know, being a classic. Um, so I guess we'll just see it. Lady and the Tramp went to Disney Plus, and I can see since Lady and the Tramp is like kind of animals, um, and Disney princesses win over animals, that they would send Bambi to Disney Plus instead of doing a big theatrical release. But I guess we're just gonna have to wait and find out. So yes, Geneva Robertson, um, Captain Marvel writer is co-directing as well as so many other people. Um, yeah, there's no release date. There's nothing. I just figured that out today. Coming to Disney Plus, February 2020. Toy Story 4. I'm so excited for this. I love this movie. Um, my, my child friends, my young, my young charges, my, um, the kids I occasionally, you know, nanny for, they loved Toy Story. They, they are watching every movie over and over and over and over again, just back to back to back to back. So much so that they know all the songs um, that are not even, you know, there's a song in Toy Story 1 called Strange Things, and they just sit there and they sing it, and it goes, strange things are happening, strange things. Um, that's it. Like, that's the story. They know the movie back and forth. Um, and I actually sing that song too. I don't know who sings that song, but, um, it's a, it's a family favorite now. So Toy Story 4 is coming as well as the Sandlot. And something that is interesting is the Sandlot left, um, at the end of last year and now it's coming back in February. So, um, if Disney's going to be recycling its movies that quickly, then there's really no reason to... Um, be in any hurry. <laughs> Don't really get that one. But they're also putting on Because of Winn-Dixie. And I love that movie. Um, I say that about every movie. But I especially love this movie. Um, Anna Sophia Robb. And it's the movie about the girl who... Um, the, the dog is like running through the store. And the only, th- the only thing the girl can think of to like name it is Winn-Dixie because that's the name of something on like an apple or something in the store and so she befriends the dog and it's really actually quite deep for being you know a children's based on a children's novel it's quite deep um opal india opal is the main character besides when dixie and her mom has abandoned the family and her pre- her dad she calls him the preacher is raising her in their small little town and it's just a really sweet kind of down-home story um that explores themes like alcoholism you know abandonment um depression abuse stuff like that really great love that movie so much has a special place in my heart and a really great soundtrack okay changing gears and moving to a whole different platform they're remaking punked and right off the bat my first question was is Ashton Kutcher coming back? And no, he's not. But someone else is going to be hosting. Chancellor. Chance the Rapper. He's going to be hosting the punk reboot. And I talked, I think my very first cast, I talked about Quibi. This new app that's, it's going to be like this bite-sized sh- streaming service. So, um, like a mobile streaming service and it's launching april 2020 so they're going to put out something like 20 10 minute punked episodes um on this streaming service so it's going to be like like on the go watching that's what it's called um that's like the premise of it and so chance the rapper is going to be hosting this um probably right at its launch all the stuff will come out so um yeah that's that's really what I got for that. I'm super excited. They're also doing 
um, singled out another MTV kind of TRL show. I want to see, what was that one about the library? Um where they had to be quiet i'd also like to see a return of jackass i love jackass but that's quibi launching in 2020 i talked about zach efron killing zach efron and that's also launching in quibi they're making too many apps like i don't want to be on my phone all the time please don't support this like mobile generation i don't want to be like this um but that's his new show in other chance news he canceled his tour um late 2019 he was supposed to go on tour in 2020 for um the big day amazing album and canceled it to hang out with his family but it's kind of weird because he's coming out with a whole show and it's like what were you really doing like where were your priorities um so he focused he canceled it after pushing it back because his daughter was born and then canceled it altogether to focus on his family i really want to see chance perform like i would love i love his music i love the sound, it's not just like your basic rap. He incorporates really cool instruments, really cool sounds into his music. And I've recently been listening to The Big Day, the whole album. And there are a couple songs in there that I like. Alright. When we get back, there's something that has been floating around Twitter for a while that I had to kind of dig into. Zola, a Twitter thread turned film. Apparently, there's this girl named Zola. She's a stripper. And she did this tell-all on her Twitter about a weekend where she met this random girl and um, like at a Hooters. And then this girl was like, you want to go to Florida? And so they went to Florida and just this craziness ensued. And it's now being picked up by A24 and made into a movie. It's like cast and everything. It premiered at Sundance, so I think it'll be um, out for everyone else soon. But it was originally a Twitter thread, and now this girl, this former stripper, Zola, is like making bank off this movie, and she claims it's all real. Other people claim, you know, this can't possibly be real, but I sat down and I listened to the whole story because I couldn't go through 200 Twitter threads. Um, So I'll give you a little bit of a gist of that and tell you where you can find more information about Zola um, when we come back. So stay with us right here on the GSMC TV podcast. Always on the go, but the day just won't be one without your Hollywood fix. Let Golden State Media Concepts Entertainment Podcast take care of that. Jordan and Keith is Entertainment Tonight meets Access Hollywood. I'm Jordan. The guy laughing, that's Keith. <laughs> yeah, I'm Keith. An all-inclusive look of pop culture. Have you ever been like on one of those nights out with your friends where if you were to retell a story about how the night went down or what you guys did, no one would ever believe you because it's just so crazy. I've definitely been at that point a couple of times in my life um, where I try and retell, you know, a story and I, I know the people just the people that I'm telling the story to just are not buying it. Um, crazy things can go down when you're around certain people. I know that for a fact. So there's this Twitter hashtag that had been going around, and it was called um, like it was hashtag Zola or a hashtag the story. So Azaya Zola Wells, that's her name. She's she was a former stripper in the state of Florida, and she kind of wrote a tell-all um, story about how she got into a falling out with this girl named Stephanie, and she posted a picture and everything, and she posted this 200-thread-long story about um, meeting this girl like at a Hooters, and it's a pretty funny story. Um, she met this girl and she, um, they both found out that they danced for money and stuff. And so the girl said, okay, well, 
um, give me your number and I'll hit you up the next time I dance. So they exchanged numbers and then the very next day, Zola got a call from this girl, Stephanie, and she said, hey, I'm going to Florida. Like, I'm going to make a lot of money and dance there. And so Zola said, oh, no bet. Like, let me go with you. And so they go and they run into a whole bunch of crazy characters and Zola meets this girl's pimp for lack of a better word there is no lack of a better word because this is not a g-rated story it's actually pretty um vulgar and they get into a whole bunch of like crazy shenanigans and i mean really dangerous and violent shenanigans and um basically this the it's a funny story like under the guise of you know, sex trafficking is no joke. And I think that's, like, a bigger takeaway from this is, like, um, yes, it is crazy. It's something you'd never believe. But even though it is a horrendous story that's super trashy and uh, they're flaunting their hoism, um, the person who made the thread kind of said, you know, yeah, all this stuff is crazy, you can believe me or not, but the bigger, you know, plot line and the plot line that the TV, movie, whatever, will focus on is um, the dangers with working as a sex worker in that kind of environment and how um, sex trafficking is really dangerous. But basically, Zola, she kind of did like a tell-all twitter thread that was like 200 tweets long and it actually got picked up to be made into a movie so um she's now coining you know her phrase hoism and making bank off of that um yeah that's the stripper saga and it's coming a24 picked it up it's actually at sundance right now um i'm gonna watch it I'm super excited for it to come out. I don't know exactly when it's going to come out, but it's like the real life Hustlers. Like if Hustlers wasn't um, fabricated at all, although it's not because Cardi B is in it and J-Lo almost turned to stripping. So, um, but like a more gritty Hustlers and it explores like something that the girl didn't really go into was like the race and the socioeconomic background of the girls because there's a white character and there's a black character and the differences and what they had to do and them kind of like making their own money calling their own people and there's it's way more in depth than I'm you know explaining it to be but it's being made into a movie and it's pretty groundbreaking especially for this girl who is probably getting, what, like, a lot of money (laughs) having her story, her basic mini autobiography being turned into a film. So, yeah, that's the stripper saga. I think the name of the film is Zola. I think that's the only thing it is, but on Twitter, it's like a stripper saga or something. And so if you look up that hashtag or hashtag the story, um, you can find that whole entire thread. Or I listened to it being retold on YouTube because I could not sit through a 200 thread Twitter, um, 200 Twitter pages. I could just could not do that. All right. So for our last segment, we're going to go through the top five movies to watch with your partner. My lovely partner suggested this. So, we'll be right back, and then we'll go through those movies. All 
Are you tired of the same old news? Are you sick of the seemingly endless political spin and negativity? The GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast is a weekly news podcast covering all the top positive and uplifting news stories. We cover stories that will inspire, uplift, and remind you of the good in the world. Tune into the Golden State Media Concepts America Still Beautiful podcast to get all the great and positive news stories of today. Download the GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast on iTunes. Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. All right. Without further ado... This is the top, these are the top five movies to watch with your partner. And these are romantic films, like the top five rom-coms to watch with your partner. And this is kind of like group consensus, like Rotten Tomatoes and IMDb and all of those, you know, janky rating services. But this is also my opinion. So number five is Ghost with Patrick Swayze and Demi Moore. I think it's Demi Moore. And Whoopi Goldberg. Um, and basically it's um, this young couple, they love to do pottery. That's just not really, that's just the opening scene. And the girl is kind of trying to get the guy to say that he loves her. Um, and he's really hesitant really hesitant to commit and stuff and so it's really not a big part of the story that's just what I remember um and also piecing it together in my mind because I never watched the whole movie through I just know about the pottery scene but I do know the plot because it was a musical um and a really really pretty musical at that um but basically it's this young couple and out when they're out one night there's an altercation with somebody the dude knows, somebody they both know, and um, the guy is shot, and he dies, but the girl, um, after a little bit of time has passed, you know, um, she swears that she can, like, feel him and, like, hear him talking to her, and everybody thinks she's crazy, but throughout the whole, like, movie, he actually leads her to figure out that the person who killed him, because they were masked in an alley, was actually his best friend, and so it's a super, like, really nice, um, really great, like, plot points and twists, and it's a very unique story, and it was a great musical, too. Cassie Levy was amazing, as Molly, um, yeah, ghost, um, for Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind with Drew Carey and one of the Kates, I lose track of Kate Walsh, Kate Blanchett, Kate Middleton, like, they're one of the Kates, I don't remember which Kate it is, um, it's the redhead one, the one that was in Titanic. And I don't understand why this movie was on here. Um, basically, it's a movie about this really manic girl who has blue hair. And um, it kind of glori- gl- glorizes? Is that a word? Glamorizes um, her mental illness. And her name is Clementine. She's just really off the wall and manic. And I don't really get why it's super cute but um basically it's this it's it's a really unique plot line like there are these two people and one of their memories gets wiped are both of them maybe both of them and um the story is just kind of about you know a chance like meaning again it's it's kind of hard to follow but um it's like one it was one of those indie movies a long time ago. Jim Carrey was like his only pseudo serious movie role. Um the the first she played the first like Manic Pixie Dream Girl, which I'm not 
a huge fan of. But it's cute and quirky, so... Um, I don't really like the fact that a lot of people kind of idolize her for being so borderline. Like, it's just... I don't know. Not not a selling point to me. Um, okay, three dirty dancing. That's pretty much um, straightforward. Everybody, everybody who's anybody should know about dirty dancing. Nobody puts baby in a corner. Patrick Swayze and, you know, um, shy mousy girl and him lifting her up. Like it's, it's pretty straightforward. It's my mom's favorite movie, dirty dancing. I don't really know much to say about it besides that. Like, although I haven't seen it, like, well, I have seen it because of my mom. Um, and although I'm not a huge fan of it, I know it because it's such like a cult classic. Like, I know that baby is shy and she's, you know, um, unpopular and she gets matched with this great dancer and who's Patrick Swayze, like a heartthrob and they're just polar opposites and eventually fall in love. And like, that's basically the story. Um, and I had the time of my life. That's where that song came from. Like, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, two, The Notebook, also pretty straightforward, but one that I'm pretty well versed in because I made Tyler watch it with me. Noah, Noah and Allie and the kind of like 1940s love story and she loses her memory at the end and then they die together and I mean, who wouldn't want to die at the same time as their partner? Like, that's probably up there for me because, um, I love that part and I like um, Rachel McAdams, and also, um, Ryan Gosling. It's just a really nice movie with, like, although it is basic, and it's, like, a basic rom-com, it's aged well, and it has great music, and great, like, cinematography and stuff, great actors. Just one of the better Nicholas Sparks adaptations, I think. Um, okay, number one, Titanic. Um, you have Leonardo DiCaprio, the same girl who was in Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Even though I can't think of her name, she's one of the Kates. I think it's Kate Blanchett. I think that's what, I think that's the Kate. Um, and basically, you know, she plays the super rich girl and then he plays the kid from the wrong side of the tracks and it's like a Romeo and Juliet in another time and place on a boat and um the boat sinks really romantic and a little bit of action a little bit of thrill and that's a general consensus those are the five most romantic movies great movies to watch with your partner there you go um honorable mentions i love little manhattan it's a it's like a it's like a romance for children. That sounds really silly, but um, I love that one. Five Hundred Days of Summer. Um, when Harry Met Sally. Love Actually. I'm not big on rom coms. They're not my favorite. Um, but I also don't like to, you know, get into my feels a lot. Alright, that's all I got for you guys tonight. Um, as always, if you liked the podcast, if you like listening to me talk for an hour, follow our social medias, give us a like, comment, and subscribe to our channels. Um, and our, we're on Spotify, Apple Music, Spreaker, anywhere you can hear podcasts. Um, let us know what you want to hear. We want to interact with you, so... Um, Send us a DM. Tell us what you're watching. You know, what you're looking forward to. As always, thank you for tuning in. And I will see you guys next week. Or hear you guys next week. You'll hear me? Something like that. Alright, everybody have a good night. 
You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Television Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to to music, from sports, to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.